So today was a lower body kind of horizontal dominant day. Um, I just dove right in. <laughs> no explanation at all. So I'm walking through some of my training days here. I'm um, talking a little bit about what I've been doing. I got my training journal with me. And for those of you that are on my Always an Athlete training team, you know I've talked about possibly doing a little bit of a west side kind of method here in the near future. So I'm messing with some stuff myself, west side inspired. Basically what I mean by that, it's just dynamic effort stuff and max effort stuff being mixed in with some more plyometric like movements. So um, it's kind of funny because some days you write out a training program for the day and you don't do any of it. You just cross it out because you just didn't want to do it that day. You make some modifications, things change. But that's how today worked. Um, all in all, let's break it down. This is the first workout of the day. I might do a smaller second one later. But we started off, or we, I started off with, um, let's just explain what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do rack pulls for kind of speed. I mean kind of because it's not super light, but more like strength speed. Makes you work for doubles. We'll do eight to ten sets. And then I'm going to do um, some sprints. I'm going to do some sled pushes potentially. I'm going to do some box jumps potentially, some calf and some hamstring work, and then accessory later on in the second workout. What ended up happening was I ended up doing my rack pulls first, and I did those at home. So I had like that and then like a 10 minute break between I went and did my acceleration sprints. Just basically 10 yard starts. Um, I felt awesome. I've been messing with the idea of doing that dynamic heavier work first. For some reason, I don't have any science behind it. I just feel like doing that heavy work produces a lot of general tension. And I like to finish up not say finish up, but follow it up, I should say, with some cyclic explosive work. So things where you're doing contract and relax, like a sprint. So I ended up doing the pulls first, and then we did the sprints. Um, I didn't film any of those, unfortunately. Then I went upstairs, and I ended up doing um, some sled sprints as well. So I did six sprints on the turf. I did six sled sprints. Originally, I wanted to do about 10 to 12 starts, about 10 yards, but... I wanted to mess with the sled a little bit and go a little heavier today, so then I messed with the sled. Um, and I was feeling really good and I threw some random bounds in there as well. Um, again, it kind of gets random at times because I just kind of want to try something out because I'm trying to learn the program still a little bit. I keep the primary ones that, that rack pull set up and you know, I want to get 10 to six to 12 sprints, whatever my body's going to let me do today. And I have my accessory work, but then I'll throw stuff in. So I did then some bounds, messing with that. I did a couple of box jumps. I mean, maybe no more than 18. And that was more of a warm up, to be honest with you. I did that before the sled sprints. So if you're following the order, I started with the rack pulls, take a break. Then I went and did on the turf sprints, starts. And then I did sled sprints. And in between the sled sprints and the turf work, I did the box jumps because it's upstairs. I ended up um, going upstairs and the turf is next where the boxes are, so I did a couple of jumps, and then I did the sled sprints, and then I followed that up with some bounds. Um, and then I did my accessory work for that portion. That's a seated calf raise, a standing calf raise, and a lion hamstring curl. And that's basically it. It's not too crazy. Um, I threw some random upper body in there to kill some time in between sets for lower. They have a bunch of machines in there, so I wanted to mess with some things, but nothing that would be exhausting. Um, nothing that would be so tiring that I wouldn't be able to recover from. Just you know, some extra pump work and a little bit of bench here and there. So then I'll do my second workout later in the day and that'll be accessory dominant. I'll probably do some sort of flexion of the core, um, maybe like a glute ham raise setup. I might do something on the, uh, probably the K box maybe for like an RDL dominant, but inertia loading. And then uh, we'll, we'll see what else we have. Maybe some glute dominant as well. Um, I'll kind of think about it, mess around with it. And it's all really, there's a potential too that I don't do any of that and end up just running tempo runs because tomorrow I might not have access to a field and I want to try and get some tempo runs in today. Not fast, but just distance. I like to go 110 yards, 120 yards, build up eight to 10 sets just to get myself some movement upright, higher velocity, getting because I don't have access to turf um, Saturday or Sunday this week. And so I wanna get out there maybe today. So we'll see, I mean, I might take that accessory portion and move that to tomorrow. Again, this is why things kind of shift side to side and front and back. 
just an honest discussion of the training because there is some skeleton of organization there and then there's some stuff that isn't very organized at all. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy. If you have comments or questions, let me know. And uh, I appreciate all this. And I'll try and do these training updates as I go along so you guys can get an idea of what I'm working on for myself. And again, what I work on is eventually my athletes get their hands on after I kind of take all the errors and all the problems I deal with going through it. And then they don't have to deal with it. I kind of go a little overboard just in an attempt to learn the most I can about the program. Appreciate you guys listening. I hope you enjoy. If you have comments or questions, please let me know. Subscribe, like, whatever, comment, talk about this stuff. I appreciate y'all. As always, take care.